This is one of Apple's new iPhone 12s. Now there is a powerful new photography feature built in here called Pro Raw. You may not have heard about it. You may certainly not know how to use it. Fortunately, I've looked up the details and I'm going to show you what it is and how to use it. But first, we have to start taking some pictures. Ah, a nice lovely leaf there. Don't worry though, I'm not usually found lurking in the bushes taking pictures. This is just for you. Now normally when you take a photograph on a phone, your camera is quickly assessing the characteristics of the shot. The amount of light that's in a picture, the kind of colour temperature that's around, which today is very blue, it's very light, it's very overcast here in these bushes. Then that picture is saved as a file, usually a JPEG, with all of the decisions that the camera has made about the scene fixed in place. This is really helpful because it means if you're looking at it on the phone or you're looking at it on a computer in several years time, the picture's gonna stay the same. This is where Apple's new Pro Raw feature comes in. It's an optional setting you can enable in the camera app on the new iPhone 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max. Now you still take a picture exactly as you did before and the camera will still make all of its automatic calibrations based on light, colour, shadows, highlights, all that kind of stuff. None of that changes. The difference is that those decisions and those exposures, they are not set in stone anymore. Now the best way to think about the difference this actually makes is to think back to how we used to use film cameras. Back in the day we'd buy a film and you'd put a film in the camera, then you'd take your picture and the light would be exposed onto the film. Then you'd send the film away and then it would get developed and then a few days later maybe you'd get a nice stack of shiny prints. Now that print is the equivalent of taking a standard picture on a standard phone. It's static, you can't really make any changes to the fundamental components that make up what that picture is. You can apply adjustments, you can apply filters, colour filters, but it's really just the modern equivalent of taking a pen to that printed out picture and changing the colours on it. You're not fundamentally changing the composition of that picture. You can't go back to the original exposure and change anything about how you shot that picture. With Pro Raw though, that's exactly what you can do. Shooting photos in RAW rather than JPEG is something all professional photographers do, and all of the professional cameras they use from Sony, Canon, Nikon, Fujifilm, etc., they all support a format of RAW pictures. And the simple reason is that a professional photographer may need to go out into the field, or in this case, an actual field, and take some pictures and then fine tune them in software like Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom. That's kind of what they were designed to do. For instance, if I was out here where there are normally lots of cows and I was shooting for What Cow magazine, uh, they may want a fairly standard, nicely exposed, normal looking shot of a cow. So I could take that, edit it if I wanted and ship it off. But let's say down the line, I wanna sell one of those pictures from that same shoot to another magazine. Let's say Gothic Milkers, a preeminent magazine for fans of heavy metal and farmyard fun. And they say, we really like this picture. We don't wanna change much about it, but could you make that cow 50% more Judas Priest? Working in RAW means I have much more flexibility to do that and to just alter the pixels that make up a cow versus putting a filter over, say, the entire image. I'm gonna stop hiding in these bushes for a few minutes, take some pictures, and show you what this looks like in practice. Okay, back in my bush. Now, one of the downsides to using RAW is that the file sizes for those photos are much, much bigger, several times bigger, actually. Apple says anywhere up to sort of around 25 megabytes per photo, rather than maybe two, three, or four uh, for a standard JPEG. But the benefits are there if you are the kind of person who wants to take a picture and have many, many more options for editing it later over and above applying filters or just manipulating a JPEG in a way that kind of reduces the quality a little bit. It's a step between being an amateur and being a pro without actually needing to go and buy pro hardware. I hope now you've learned a bit more about what Pro Raw is on these new iPhones and how it relates to professional photography. If you've got any examples of pictures you've taken or got any questions for me, I can be found online in all of the usual places. Send me some of your snaps. For now though, I've been Nate Langson in a bush in Hertfordshire and I've been Technically Speaking.